some investigations concerning uh, the subject matter of the zoo hand in height or two handedness and the four hand in height or the present handedness. Um, although the second one isn't quite parallel because present is added on somehow as a interpretation. How would you say it more literally? It's sort of like the uh, the face, the before, sort of like the. Um, all right, let's try to. So as usual, extemporaneous. So let's try to settle some of that as we go forward. Um, yeah, I think of the word for as somehow like the word uh, post as in um, uh, or some similar word like just uh, literally forehandedness, I suppose. Um, so two-handedness and forehandedness. Uh, so let's start with um, I know it was a fairly, uh, uh, not just criticized, but as it were, um, uh, proscribed by quite a few casual listeners. That shouldn't trouble us too much. Um, so let's start with the notion that we're dealing here primarily with the sphere of touch and the sphere of sight. Uh, so why touch? Why is the two-handedness touch? Um, so remember, touch is up close, um, the feet touching the ground while walking. Um, sight is remote or distant. It can go further. But anything we can see at a distance, we can assume we could also touch um, a rainbow, maybe not. But that's an exception. Um, so, since the antiquity, uh, the idea, and perhaps it, it has its origin in Aristotle, is that the hand is the prototype of all equipment. All equipment. So already, and the hand is basic. Is then the basic. Uh, sense of what we use to touch. So that's the connection. Um, so already the hand is a prosthetic. So, so for instance, in Freud's, um, this is a, uh, just to give some historical context, this notion in the 19th century prior to Heidegger was becoming big that the, everything's becoming a prosthetic, prosthetic device. Uh, human technology as a whole was the uh, spread of the prosthetic power of the human being into all regions. Um, in a way, Heidegger absolutizes that with the notion of the um, two-handedness. Uh, when you just have, uh, say, a mouse or a keyboard, this can often simply be no different than just using the hand to grip, using your hand to grip something or to support yourself or some other thing. Uh, true, touch more generally includes the whole sense of uh, solidity. Um, but clearly that's not what we're aiming at. The sense of, so we're, we're going away from the move between primary and secondary qualities, where initially a lot of people thought, oh, primary, the touch or solidity, solidity rather than touch with the hand uh, seem to be the primary quality, the real thing, get, to bring us in contact with reality rather than uh, the human experience. Um, so Heidegger explicitly wants to say we're not talking about solidity or corp corporality, but we're talking about um, the hand understood as a piece of equipment uh, this can then 
as in Harmon's book, Graham Harmon's book on the um, tool being, he extends it to the entire uh, reality, everything. Um, that's slightly unclear. Um, so sight, on the other hand, is this spear which the Greeks are being associated with, sight and the presence, presence of the hand, or the forehanded height. Um, and if we read closely, we'll see that Heidegger is, throughout his works, giving um, a closer meaning to this. But basically, we don't, I think we point ourselves in the right direction when we think about it this way. The uh, sphere of touch is the first person attitude towards the world. First person, um, both in the sense of the grammatical first person describing what we're doing, the more phenomenological attitude towards the world. It's uh, me who's speaking now, I'm speaking now, I'm standing here, etc., rather than describing someone from the third person attitude. Uh, the third person attitude is more like sight. So basically this is um, why people say, oh, Heidegger is saying there's a practical attitude and the theoretical attitude. In uh, August Kant, for instance, the example of what theory means is given by saying, um, and just simply in keeping with the ancient Greeks, that theory is the person sitting in the um, balcony seat, looking at the play from outside, and uh, practice is being mixed up and involved in it. Um, so the, the world of touch shows that when we're talking about even the body itself and corporality, we're somehow not talking about the same thing as the solidity. That's a big um, difference there. And therefore, Dasein as concern is something different than uh, the body, even though we're talking exactly about part of the body, which is a hand and the manipulation that can happen with the hand as the uh, er form of equip equipment. Um, when we undergo this analysis, we should realize that what Heidegger is doing is describing not a correction to the people that have brought in the notion of the technological essence, but he's describing the technological essence itself. This is the form technological essence takes, is in thinking of the world as a giant prosthetic, as a giant piece of equipment, um, and that this is what human beings do. So he's putting a mirror on the technological essence, saying, here we are, um, this kind. And so Harmon is then accused, probably rightly, of trying to go deeper into it. But in a way, um, I have to say, and also seen as uh, going directly towards Satan himself by Dugan, um, and so I am um, a follower of Dugan's thinking, which I think is a divinely inspired thinker. Uh, but I will say that it is necessary, even from Heidegger's point of view, that we go into the technological thinking, at least in the sense that um, we put a mirror on ourselves so we see that we're doing technological thinking, that we're in the technological essence. So otherwise, how can we negotiate an, exi um, an existence with it and uh, get free enough freedom from it that the, the new beginning could arise? So in describing... Um, uh, Our current concept of touch and sight has already uh, concepts of the um, technological essence. We don't suddenly um, break with that just because we're going into the first person part 
which the Greeks didn't do. The Greeks stayed with the third person part. Just because we're going into the phenomenological view and staying with it, we don't suddenly break out of it. Because the whole account itself is actually um, still a, 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 a kind of account that Plato could make, a descriptive account of everything. Um, the question of, so then we have to see um, where is it that we're talking about being in contradistinction to um, an inner attitude of a being or a third person description. Where is it that the, um, so the being, and so remembering that when we talk about um, the hand as the gripping equipment, we speak in the same way, the, so the, the hand hands, it is a hand, it's a piece of equipment, but in the same breath we have to, or the same thought, we have to hold the thought that the nothing nothings, nick nick tet, nothing nothings. So the sense that nothing nothings, which um, at first is criticized under the claim that um, that's like saying nothing is, but that's clarified by saying that what is means in the case of nothing, nothing is, is specific to nothing. Nothing is means is takes the content of nothing. Uh, the piece of equipment called the hand, being a hand, is, takes that specific um, content. Uh, so to understand what Heidegger is unfolding, um, we have this road of investigation of going through uh, how the Greeks and then the Christians world set these concepts off that are now active in the uh, universities, uh, mainly under, for instance, such problems as um, uh, saying here's something um, happening externally like uh, face blindness and then where is it happening in the neurons or something like that. But these, uh, how those kind of problems come out of the tradition and how the thought forms are evolving within a certain limitation. And then by seeing that, this is what should afford us the um, again a mirror on ourselves which breaks us out of the uh, captivation that we're in so I, I'll try to get um, closer examples uh, not closer examples but I try to make better investigative paths better ways uh, going forward <laughs>